Hey, gun people. We're going to talk bullets today. Rifling, spinning, overstabilization, too much spin, not enough spin. What twist is best? Which one's worse? How do I know? Well, in most times, it's not going to matter a whole bunch. If you're shooting a bullet, probably four to 600 yards max, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Pistol bullets, even going to make less of a difference. Uh, you got a lot lower velocity. So this kind of started, I was talking to a guy in a gun shop. We started talking about RPMs and how to figure it out and bullet barrel length and what's good and what's bad. Uh, so I'm probably going to jump around here and just cover all kind of different off-the-wall stuff. But let's start with the rifling in a bullet. The rifling in a bullet makes the bullet spin as it comes out, and that's spinning like a centrifugal force on a top keeps it spinning upright if you spin it fast enough as the top slows down it starts to wobble when you first throw a top sometime it wobbles until it stabilizes much like throwing a football if you throw it in a spiral it cuts through the air better it goes straighter if you wobble a football when you throw it it goes all over the place so and that falls into the spin or angular momentum or a bunch of other physics stuff that most people know more about than me. So there's always a bunch of terms about yaw and ye and yeehaw and whatever. Uh, yaw here, the center of the bullet, if it's going straight, like the center of a spiral, you have a nice straight path. This bullet's path is this red line here. So the bullet should be going on this path, and it is going on this path. Notice the center of gravity is still on the path. But the rear of the bullet is higher off the path and the nose is lower. Now this is over exaggerated, but a little bit of movement on this tip will slow down a bullet a little bit. It'll affect its accuracy. It'll affect its speed. It'll make it uh, not fly as true. So there's, there's all kind of factors when you fire a bullet out at thousands of feet per second. And... You do different things like changing the, the the twist rate, the bullet barrel length, the powder, faster burning, more pressure, less pressure, longer barrel, shorter barrel, uh, heavier bullet, lighter bullet, all kind of things. So when we're talking about barrel rifling, handguns and rifles have it. Shotguns usually don't. Shotgun is nice and polished and clean, just straight smooth. Because when you're shooting BBs or things out of a shotgun, they're not spinning. You don't create that centrifugal force on the bullets the bullets just fly out and the old black powder guns i think now they might have rifling but any the, when they first came out with guns it was you put lead down a pipe and you fire it out and it went pretty straight but it lost velocity quick it started circling sometime your accuracy wasn't that great so when they started putting rifling in barrels accuracy improved tremendously you got the bullet to spin now how fast too fast too slow, what helps and what hurts, eh, there's going to be a thousand opinions out there. So rifling in the barrel, if you look down any barrel when you're cleaning it, you're going to see these rotation or grooves. Um, I, I guess the proper terms, the groove is what's cut in and the land. So the grooves are, I, I get them mixed up. Everyone's like, the grooves are what's kind of grooved down. The lands is what stick up, but the lands are also the ridges that stick up. And that's what grabs the bullet. So if you don't clean your gun, lead will get in to the grooves and it makes your bullet smooth. And then you lose accuracy. So cleaning, a, a big part of cleaning is making sure that your grooves are nice and clean so they allow the lands to stick up and make contact with the bullet to get your proper spin, your 1 in 12 twist or whatever it is. So when a bullet gets out of the rifle, it's spinning, and it's spinning fast. And the equation is, you know, for a 1 in 12 twist, you're looking at 3,000 feet per second. If you're shooting a 3,000, you're looking at 180,000 revolutions a minute. You're looking at 3,000 revolutions a second when a bullet comes out of a barrel. So it's almost spinning as fast in a circle as it is going forward. I mean, it's just amazing how, how much a, a, a bullet twists. And those things, you can tell where these little grooves here on the bullet, 
this bullet was smooth until it was fired, and then the grooves made little markings on the bullet, which is how they do bullet ballistics when they're trying to track a bullet to a gun. Obviously, you want a nice, straight, flat flying, flying bullet. When a bullet flies the right speed with the right weight and everything's in a line, you lower the drag. When the bullet starts doing this other stuff and wobbling and getting too fast or too slow or whatever affects it, it hits a branch, it hits something, it cars it to wobble, uh, that's going to mess up your accuracy. And if you want to get technical and talk a bunch of stuff that I really don't understand, they did a study on the 7.62 bullet and co computation of the fluid dynamics are used as an estimate of aerodynamic properties and high angles of attack. The role of aerodynamic moment, uh, particularly Magnus phenomena, the turning the apex is studied. A pod is magnet moment tilts the total aerodynamic movement vector clockwise and generally drives the bullet down or turning nose down. The bullet turning in a direct flat spin maneuver to Magnus moment auxiliary uh, behavior and or Magnus moment caused bullet instability may occur during the turning of the trajectory apex. These were found to have negligible effect on the bullet turning launch angle, but they may contribute considerably to the bullet falling phase behavior, possibly to affect the bullet descending part of the flight at short length. What the? Really? Okay, somebody will get that and explain that maybe. When you're talking about rifle twists, sometimes you're looking at more aggressive. A 1 in 6 is a more aggressive rifle twist than, let's say, a 1 in 12. So you can see the difference how these rifling are stretched out over a longer period and are slower. But remember, when you start putting force and things in here like 3,000 feet per second, these may not look like spinning much, but it is. And this one's even spinning more. This is a very aggressive twist because it's not as long and stretched out. So when you're thinking of a 1 in 6 versus a, a 1 in 12, and I know a lot of people are like, well, 9's best. No, 6 is best. No, 7 is best. 7, I mean, I don't know. Out of all the information I have, I, it, to me, it really doesn't matter. I'm not making 1,000-yard shots. And to be honest, unless you're out there sniping people, there's no reason. If you're trying to kill an animal 1,000 yards away, that's kind of irresponsible. If you miss or injure the animal, then he just dies of pain. You shouldn't be shooting animals at a thousand yards out. But I know it's like to do it so they can brag about it. But uh, you know, this isn't going to affect me and most shooters too much. But it's it's kind of neat to understand all the physics and different forces reacting on a bullet. And for the baseball fans out there, understanding the way a baseball is thrown and the way it's spun by the pitcher can affect where it hits on the plate. So a ball thrown straight, which um, with, uh, with spin, you notice the rear of the ball, the, the cavity that it makes, they're calling it the wake here. On a ball thrown with no spin, the wake is pretty much behind it. With a spin, the wake kind of goes down, and that downward motion changes the impact of the ball. And they show that here on the curveball. So uh, when a pitcher, a right-handed pitcher, throws a ball, it only moves three to four inches off his line because he, when he's throwing a ball, he's throwing a ball on this dotted trajectory. So he's aiming right here, but the ball, by the time it gets to the plate, moves all the way across the plate to the other side. And a pitcher throws a ball at about anywhere from 80 to 100 miles an hour. So when you're throwing a ball at 100 miles an hour, it doesn't give a whole lot of time when it's traveling from the plate to here for the, the guy at the bat to watch that ball when it's moving. And that's how you strike people out. But again, the way the wind and forces react on a ball kind of does the same thing, maybe not as a greatest scale on a bullet. But the difference between a bullet and a baseball is a baseball is traveling relatively slower and a shorter distance, a bullet is traveling much faster, spinning much faster on a 1 in 6, 380,000 times a minute it's spinning, and it, it's going through the air and it's going a lot longer. So the, a lot of different factors, but so let me get to the formula on determining the RPM of a bullet. And the basic formula is you get your barrel twist per inch. 
a one and six means your bullet turns completely twice in one foot. And a one and 12, it turns once in one foot. So the lower the number on the twist, the more spin you get. Um, if you had a one in 24, it would only spin half in one foot. And then it would spend a complete revolution in 24 feet. So understanding your how your barrel twist uh, changes your bullet spin, and then you times that feet per second. So if your bullet is 1,000 feet per second or 2,000 feet per second or whatever it is, and then that will give you your revolutions per second. And then to get per minute, you times it by 60, and you get your revolution per minute. And getting your twists, uh, you know, a 1 in 7 is 1.74 twists per foot. A 1 in 6 is 2 twists per foot. A 1 in 12 is 1 twist per foot, okay? After you, get, after you determine your foot, and to determine that, you divide it by 12, basically. Uh, 6 will go into 12 two times. Um, so there you go. After that, you multiply the twist per foot by the second. If it's 3,000 feet, 1 in 12, you go 1 times 3,000 times 60. Gives you 180,000. 1 by 6, 2 times feet per second. Gives you 6,000. 2 times 3,000 feet is 6,000. Revolutions per second times 60. You get 360,000 revolutions per minute. And 1 in 7 twists. 7 into 12, 1.74 or 1.714 times 3,000 feet will give you Y5142.86 per second times 60 gives you 308,571 revolutions per minute on a bullet and a 1 in 7 twist. Which one's better? Well, yeah, it's hard to say. And if you don't like my formula, uh, I copied a couple of pieces. Some people put them in the comments, some I found online. Uh, here's a calculation they use. Uh, MV times 12 twist rate in inches times 60 equal bullet RPM. A quick version is MVX720 twi uh, divided by twist rate equal RPM. And they give an example here. And they give a second example here. And someone else explains it here. A little different. Maybe the same. Um, however you want to get to it, whichever one's easier for you. Some people like certain methods. Someone that's pretty uh, anal about their bullet twist rate and obviously has done a lot of research about it and thinks it's important. And put this comment here so you can pause and read that if you want to. And of course, the style of the bullet will affect it. All these bullets, when they hit the rifling, will start spinning and all will have the same spin pattern. But I'm thinking this one's going to slow down slower than this one because we have grooves in the bullet which are going to be causing more drag on the spin. Will they go faster? You know, most rifle hunting rounds are much more pointed. Uh, pistol rounds don't tend to be as pointed as rifle rounds. You're not shooting as far. You don't have as long as a barrel. You're not getting near the pressures. This guy tries to explain the difference between the heat and the energy transfer. To me, heat and energy is the same. Heat is energy. Energy is heat. Uh, he explains it on how... He gives a formula here, which I can't even read, and I don't even want to try. But basically about how, and if you talk to somebody who's been shot with a bullet, a lot of times they say it burns. And it actually cauterizes the hole a little bit because it's traveling so fast. It's, you know, traveling 3,000 feet per second. It's spinning 380,000 revolutions per minute. And then it's cutting through the air. It's got hot gases behind it. It's got friction from shooting out the barrel from the grooves. And then it's cutting through the air, and then when it hits you, guess what? It's hot. Here's a little picture to get you thinking about. When a plane flies at 500 miles an hour, and it shoots a bullet at 1,500 miles an hour, the bullet speed is actually 2,000. You know, it's like throwing a, a ball 30 miles an hour, and then standing in back of a truck going 30 miles an hour, and you throw that same 30-mile-an-hour pitch, that ball's going to be going 60 miles an hour, because you're throwing it at 30 mile, of course, you're going to have wind deflection and which ways the wind blowing and all kind of other issues. But uh, it's just bullet dynamics is, is pretty complex. 
And a lot of people just think, oh, just add more power, get it fast. No faster is better. No bigger is better. No faster spinning is better. No slower spinning is better. No pointed is better than flat. And that, look, it, it, a lot of it's opinion. A lot of it is what you're using for. There's not one bullet for everything. Um, so there's a lot of factors out there. The 50 caliber obviously shoots a huge bullet very fast. Uh, they're saying here it's night, you know, 1,900 miles per hour is with a bullet. Everything falls at 32 feet per second. So obviously, the farther you're shooting something, the more gravity is going to affect it. The more things come into play, the more things you have to consider. Uh, I don't even know what the twist rate is on a 50 caliber, and I'm not sure... If people are, you know, absolutely, it's got to be a 1 in 12 versus a 1 in 7 or a 1 in 6 or a 1 in 2. Uh, I, I'm sure there's different twists on a 50 caliber. You're shooting a much heavier bullet with a lot more force. This bullet right here is uh, basically a neck down Weatherby 378. And it's neck down to .224 caliber. And it gets 4,604 feet per second. Pretty fast bullet. Okay, so let's take a look at um, a bullet that actually got so unstable from overspinning that it turned sideways and hit. Now, a lot of people say 22 tumbles. It doesn't tumble while it's flying. It tumbles when it hits things. It flies straighter. It wouldn't be accurate. Uh, so... This thing didn't hit anything, and the guy who shot this told me he was shooting, but they were experimenting on different barrels and different twist rates and et cetera, and he goes, he couldn't figure out how the bullet just turned sideways and hit down there, and then they did another target, which is here, and in this target, this is what happens when he, you overspun it so much that they shot a very fast bullet and again, I think he was shooting two two threes, and this little thing right here that you see is actually melted lead where the casing has compromised and allowed the bullet spinning the lead inside to melt, and it actually um let's see if I can get that zoomed in. So you can actually see the melted lead that burnt through this target. It's pretty. I actually saw the target. I pulled my phone out, took a picture of it, because he still has these targets. So the bullet is spinning, and the lead was flying out before it went through the target, and some of the lead hit this and burnt these crescent moon shapes. And you see a little specks here of a burning. And they actually burnt because of over-spinning the bullet. It created... A, uh, a melting of the lead inside because it's spinning so fast, it's fired so fast, uh, heat generated through air, etc. Actually, the lead on the inside, now, not all lead bullets, we had a long discussion on this, on what lead melts, etc. Not all lead bullets will melt when they're flying. But the reason they put copper around it is copper handles heat better than lead. We couldn't shoot a straight lead bullet at 3,000 feet per second. I think it would come apart. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Somebody who's out there who's a reloader, etc. I don't think lead will hold together. The purpose of jacketing is to keep the lead from deforming and melting, and that heat generating would uh, literally melt your bullet in the air. Now, I don't know if you fired a lead bullet at 3,000 feet. I'm not sure if it'd make it out of the barrel, if it could take the friction. Somebody that's a reloader might be able to, to do that, but uh, bullet... Bullet technology and the way things, uh, you know, go, I, I, I find it kind of interesting. Um, hopefully you got something out of this video, but when he showed me this target about melting bullets, I was like, that's pretty cool. Can anybody figure out what the twist was on this, whether it was a left twist or a right twist? Yeah, we'll leave it for the comments. All right, well, in that there, hopefully you got something out of bullets and RPMs.